Hey guys, time for the Call of Duty Exoskeleton Part 2. So, we're going to start looking at the pneumatic system for this exoskeleton. And I did a bit of shopping, so I went to the Army Surplus Store, and I got some straps and webbing, which is going to help with building some of these harnesses to support all the gear. But what I really like is I got this. This is a mil-spec backpack. So it's basically military grade, and very durable, and it's got tons of padding, straps, and room for all kinds of stuff. So, what I'm going to do is this backpack is going to be basically part of the equipment you put on before you put on the exoskeleton. So it's going to house the pneumatic tank, the air compressor, and the battery. So you'll put this backpack on, you'll put the boots on I showed in the last video, and then you'll basically attach the limbs to yourself. So it'll be a really quick um, quick way of getting into the exoskeleton. And like I said, it's going to be a very modular design. So, let's take a look at some of the pneumatic parts. So, for the first tests, we're just going to be using a small sealed lead acid battery. Uh, unlike a car battery, this is a, a gel cell, so you can, you can put it upside down. No hydrochloric acid is going to, sorry, sulfuric acid is going to uh, leak out. It's not going to be enough capacity for the actual exoskeleton, but for that we're going to be using a lithium ion battery, I just haven't ordered that yet. So let's just turn on the air compressor and see what it sounds like. It's noisy, but it's not actually as noisy as I thought it would be. So the other thought I had with this backpack is I have this motorcycle armor vest and it's got this nice uh, flexible vertebrae armor basically and I think because this is actually also a vest attached with straps we might be able to attach it to the back of the exoskeleton and give you a bit of armor over the power pack so it doesn't take damage. So let's see how we can uh, fit this stuff in there. Now the nice thing with the uh, mil-spec bag is it actually already has metal reinforcement on the inside of the bag with a hard plastic back. We may need to upgrade this with an actual metal panel so we can mount stuff rigidly to it, but we're halfway there. So as you can see, it fits the tank pretty good, but there's not too much room for the air compressor. It's going to have to be very snug next to it. And the problem with having it in there is it might get too hot because it's in a sealed area and there's no way for air to be cooling the motor. So we may actually have to have the motor mounted off, say, the bottom or the top, which means we're going to need a metal frame that extends past this backpack but stays away from my body since my body is flesh and blood and rather soft. Or hard. <laughs> Alright, so these are some of the uh, components that I ordered from Horn Blasters. This is a pressure safety valve, or it's called a pressure blow off valve. And basically, what it is is a small brass valve with a spring in it. And that spring is calculated to um, only compress at pressures of over 200 psi. So basically if I try and put too much pressure into this tank, the spring will give way, releasing air to prevent the tank from exploding. So it's a, it's a very good safety feature and you'll find these on pretty much all air compressors. In addition, we have this. So this is the 200 psi pressure switch. This is the one that once the tank hits 200 psi, it will then tell the air compressor to stop compressing air, because otherwise the blow-off valve will go and you're just wasting power. So let's install some of this. So we're going to need a reducing or a uh, enlarging bushing for this. I believe this is a quarter inch MPT and all the ports on here are 3 8 and half an inch on the outside. But the pressure safety valve is okay. So we're going to put that one out of the way, probably at the bottom. 
We can always move these later on. Alright, so we're going to need some more fittings before we can take this any further. So I'm just going to run to the hardware store and I'll be uh, back soon. Alright, so I'm back from the hardware store and I got the fittings we need. So let's try putting this together and see if we can uh, get to hold some pressure. Alright, so unfortunately I don't actually have any pressure gauges, but I do have a flow regulator which has a pressure gauge built in. So in order to use this, all I have to do is block one end and attach the other end to here. So you want air going in on this side, and you want air coming out on this side, but we're going to block it using this valve. And now we should be able to watch the pressure go up. We don't seem to have any leaks. I'll do an actual uh, bubble test later on, but pretty good test just to make sure everything everything works the way it's supposed to. Uh, I haven't hooked up the 200 psi shutoff yet, but I'll probably do that in the next um, pneumatic update. So that's all I have for this week. I've I've been working on some other stuff in the background. Um, I'm not going to show it to you until it's a bit closer to being done, but I'm planning on having weekly updates. So hope you enjoy. Test some of this ballistic plastic that I got for uh, some armor plating on the XR. See how it does against three quarter inch parker board. So, obviously, we can't use three quarter inch particle board as uh, XR. But how will the plastic compare?